What's up guys, welcome back to another Race Rewind video. Here we have the Cannonball GNCC 2017 Round 3 Sparta, Georgia. Waiting for that 10 second call. We're waiting, waiting, waiting for Ricky Towery to wave that green flag. Here we go. Oh, look at Brian Basco, that yellow LTR. He, he had a good start, but look at Justin Curry. He went right by him in that 250R. It's probably one of the nicest 250Rs I've ever seen for Gene C. Oh, we got mud in the camera. Mud in the camera. These two guys are like wheel to wheel, man. I'm just going to stay back here and just chill and... Oh, they just touched, they just touched. Oh, oh, not me and Justin just touched. All right, I'm in second place, so that's okay. I'm chasing Basco. He's gone, man. He's kept, he's, he's freaking trying to get away. Now, we ran this track uh, in 2016 as well. And uh, in 2016, the start was actually on the main area. Oh, there's a fan pointing me a good line. And it looks like it's tough to see, but Vasco just buried it in a mud hole. So now I'm in the lead, guys. In the lead, that's what we want. So as I was saying, uh, in 2016 we ran this track, and the start, which you'll see in a minute, we're, got, we're across the street right now, which this is the only time we race this section at this track. We're just on the start. Once we get across the street, we stay over there. But in 2016, they had the start across the street, which was fine, but this place, You'll see as the race progresses, this place was actually kind of small. So it actually helped it helped a lot. In 2017, when they moved the start across the street, they opened up a lot more uh, parking for everybody, which was nice. And uh, we only ran this track in, like I said, 2016, 2017, that was it, which uh, this was a nice track. I'm not sure what happened. Uh, I know the actual track was 12, I wouldn't say 12 miles, so, you know, track-wise it was perfect. I think maybe just the parking was just a little too tight. Um, so they ended up going back to the General because that's where they used to go. Because um, we went to the General, and uh, I think they went to the General. I didn't go there in 2013, but I went to the General in 2014, in 2015, and then we went back to the General in... 2018 and we went back to the general last year and it is on the schedule for this year as well which that's a good track too all right we're catching we're catching guys in the class ahead of us so this is vet b guys vet b round three cannonball run we got a, we got a, a, a lapper ahead of me so i gotta get around this guy i gotta get around this guy you can see it's pretty tight so chances are I'm not going to be able to get around him, but I'm going to uh, let him know I'm there, scream at him. Got a fan cheering everybody on, which is cool. <clears throat> definitely tight on this side, guys. It's definitely tight. Look at it. So we're getting close. We're going to uh, come out to like a small little section, and then we're going to cross the street, and then get to the main, you know, the main area of this place where, where the, really the whole track is, because like I said... We only ride this section on the stock, so that's it. Still working our way through. We're not across the road yet. We're getting there. I'm trying to I gotta get around this guy. I'm in the lead. I need to I need to go, 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 I need to go. Alright, here we go. We see some openings. Alright, so here we go. So we're going to cross the road. Yep, so here we go across the street. So now we are on the main section. So now we're gonna get into the woods and this track didn't have a lot of fields uh, it probably had a mile or a mile and a half maybe because you had this section here and then there was another section towards the end of the track and that was it so it was like a solid wood track which was nice That's, I mean I can't even get around this guy it's kind of it's freaking pretty frustrating to watch over I tell you that he knows I'm there he definitely knows I'm there he's last in his class he really should just let me buy it, but whatever. I'm obviously, uh, I wasn't too aggressive back in these days. I'm, I like to think I'm a little more aggressive now. Use the rev limiter a little more instead of just hollering at people because sometimes they can't hear you. It is loud. 
A uh, little dust, a little dust. Alright, here we go, here we go. Good, that's good. Alright, alright. So now we're, in, we're ahead of him. I'm just gonna keep moving, keep moving. I know this guy's behind me, I can hear him. So, if you guys followed along with my racing over the years, uh, my first full year in Vet B was 2016. I did try, I think I tried one or two races in 2015. And then 2016, or it may have been 2000, no, because, yeah, 2015, 2016, 2017, I ran that. So, 2016, I got my very first hole shot at this track in 2016. It was freaking awesome, but it was scary as hell at the same time because everybody was behind me. You could hear them. They obviously wanted to kill me and get by me. Um, a couple guys got by me. I was moving along okay, and uh, I had walked the track obviously on Friday, and uh, maybe halfway through six mile mark or something like that. There was this little mellow little jump between a couple of trees, like not even anything serious. And uh, I was I was walking the track, thinking, hey, I'm gonna jump this little jump. You know, it's kind of cool. So here I go. I get there during the race, and I think I was in second or third place at the time I had a couple guys pass me and hit that little jump and it shot me to the left right into a tree and uh, I actually broke my hand that race guys it was it was a bummer round it was round two that year because that year in 2016 Florida and Georgia were the first two rounds and I did good in Florida I think that year I think that year I may have gotten second in Florida or maybe not i don't remember exactly i'd have to look um here we go another lap up. all right that was good that was good but anyway i broke my hand i had a, i had a little wreck i got going again i got i got moving and I, right away i knew because it didn't really hurt but when i went to go grab it was my right hand when i went to go grab the handlebars and and hang on and give it some throttle i definitely had a like a sharp pain and i was like Man, maybe I thought like maybe I just sprained it. So I'm like trying to shake it off and it wasn't going away guys. So I was like, oh man, I think I broke my hand. Like it was it was like the harder I tried to hang on, which obviously for these races you gotta hang on for your freaking life because it's rough. Three mile marker guys, if you saw that three mile marker. So I was running, like I said, third. So a couple guys passed me when I crashed, but then I just started literally just limped it back. To my pits oh god here we go this guy's gonna get my way yep he gets in my way that's awesome so i limped it back to the pits i was going literally first gear letting everybody by that came up on me pulling over and uh got to my pits and you know my wife knew something was going going on because it took me a while to get there and she saw the whole class go by and i was like oh yeah i just hit a tree i think i broke my hand and she's like oh you're fine just go <laughs> like you know you don't understand it really hurts and uh so I was like, well, let me finish the lap because I was right near the finish line and I'll see how I feel. And uh, obviously just pushing it that last six miles or whatever it was, it just, the pain was just getting worse. So I finished the lap, came back in and that was it guys. Um, so the result of that was a broken metacarpal and 10 weeks in a cast, which was a bummer. So my season, you know, at the time I thought was pretty much done. But we did come back. We came back. I think I'm not sure. We, we missed. We missed ten weeks, so we missed between four and five races. Um, so we came back and it was limestone, and I actually had a horrible race there. I think I broke down. Something happened. Horrible race there. But after that, I started doing decent. Maybe like top fives. Maybe a podium here and there. And I think. You know, once I missed a couple races, I think I was in 16th place in points. So when the year was over, I ended up coming back to fourth place in points, which was really good. I didn't give up. I just came back and tried to do my best. And then uh, we come 2017, a fresh year. We had a great ride in Florida, which was awesome. We took second. We should have had the win there, guys. Another pretty bad story we didn't break down but almost just as bad we actually we kind of did break down but we didn't break anything we ran out of freaking gas 
So every year I, I've ran Florida, I always have a plan. Uh, you know, lap two, we stop for, you know, we stop in the pits for gas. Like every race, we just figure lap two, you know, whether it's, or, you know, depending on where our pits are in the mile market, it could be at the end of lap two or the beginning of lap three, whichever, you know, it works out to me. So every year, prior to that year in Florida, the pros always lap me lap three. So I'm thinking, I'm in the, I led, was leading the whole race in Florida. Got into the lead early. Three or four miles in, Vasco was leading, got by him, was had a decent lead, nothing crazy, maybe 30 seconds or so, and went right by my pits on lap three, which I think we were close to the beginning of the track. So I'm just like, all right, the pro's gonna catch me, so I'll get the checkered flag, we're good. Well, that's not what happened, guys. That was one of the first times where I didn't get lapped. Um, get to the finish line, and a mile or so before the finish line, the bike's sputtering, it's stalling, the fuel light's on, and I'm just like, oh man, and I'm still like two miles from my pits. And uh, and now Brian's catching me, because I kept stalling, stopping, going. So we get through the finish line, half a mile after the finish line, the quad stalls, I'm out of fuel, it won't start. Basco passes me, I'm stranded, and I'm just like, oh man. And there was a couple other guys that passed me, but I don't think they were in my class. So me and Brian were actually like the last couple of guys that made the lead lap, you know, the lead lap. So we were on lap four. I had a guy that was near where I was broken down. I kind of walked over to him and said, hey, he had a gas can. So I said, hey, bud, give me some gas, you know what I mean? And he wouldn't give me gas. He was like, this gas isn't for you. He picked up the can and he walked away. And I'm like, what the F? You know, it was really bad. So I just sat there and waited. At least five minutes has gone by. And... One of the uh, sweepers comes by, he's like, what's up? And I was like, I ran out of gas. He's like, well, I'll give you some gas. So he was nice enough to drain a little bit of gas out of his dirt bike, and we got me going. And I almost made it to the pits. I ran out of gas again, but luckily there was somebody there I knew that gave me another splash of fuel, made it to my pits. My wife was absolutely furious with me, screaming at me. We didn't drive all the way to Florida for you to run out of gas. <laughs> so needless to say, guys, I never, miss a pit stop and uh, I don't worry about getting lapped if the pros lap me or they don't lap me I still get gas so it was definitely uh, not a great moment but we learned from it um, so that was that so here we are we're still in the lead guys I got Justin Kerr behind me because I could hear him you know yelling at me to try to push me to get by these guys that won't let me by as usual This was definitely a good year. The, the good old vet B days. I definitely miss fighting with some of these guys. Justin Curry, he doesn't race anymore. Which stinks. Brian Vasco, he doesn't race anymore. He may come to one here and there. But uh, a bunch of other guys as well. We had a good group of guys this this year during 2017. So it was, it was a fun year. I actually got my first win. It was at round 10 at Unadilla 2017. Which was freaking awesome. And I would actually finish the year, uh, 2017, I would finish, I would uh, finish in second for points, which was good. My best finish for GNCC to date, along with my best overall with GNCC to date, which was 40th, which was pretty good. I did get 40th overall in 2018 when I moved up to Senior A. Um, this year was was a lot worse. This, this year, well, 2019, this past year, I should say, I was in the 50s, maybe 56 or something like that. It was just a horrible year over, overall. I would say my worst year overall. All right, we're passing this guy as one. We got by one guy, so that's good. Let's see if we can get by these couple of riders. Kerr's hanging on. He got by him too, because he's still screaming at me. This was definitely a fun track, guys. I mean, it was beat up. I mean, you'll see some sections where the roots are really exposed, and this is just our first lap. And we did four laps here. So obviously, with every lap that goes by, the track's gonna just fade away a little bit in different areas here and there. But uh, for the most track, for the most part, this track was actually a lot of fun. 
and actually I have to say that this was one of the longest races that I've ever been in. So mile marker five, longest races I've ever been in man. This race went long, even the pros ran a little bit long. They were around two hours and 15 minutes. And I did four laps in two hours and 50 minutes and 17 seconds, which is a long time. I will tell you guys, I was pretty beat after this race, not gonna lie, pretty beat. And this was a week after Florida, so that's not a lot of recovery time. Florida always beats up your hands, guys, blisters. Um, but we had the week to recover, and I think my hands were, were okay. Probably by the end of the race, they were probably opened up again. But um, we had a good run. We're in the lead. We would end up losing the lead, guys. Ryan Vasco, he, would, he was the, the class champion in 2017. He's a friggin' incredible rider. He's actually one of my sponsors. He owns Waynesburg Yamaha. Good guy, good racer, good friend of mine. He had an incredible year. He got me, I think on the last lap, he passed me and he was gone. But we took second, which is still a good finish. It was close. I had, I had led, you know, a little bit overall through the season, which was, which was cool. And I think it was at Powerline Park where I lost the lead because I had an issue where uh, I'm not sure what it was. It may have been a fuel pump relay or something electrical maybe, but something happened, the bike quit, and I was stranded for a little bit. I think it was the, the third lap. I'm not sure what place I was in at the time. Maybe maybe in the top five. I think I was doing okay. And uh, the bike had quit, so I was stuck for probably about five to 10 minutes, probably closer to that 10 minute mark. And then a, uh, you know, one of the four by fours, you know, the tow guys that pulls you out came by and was like, what happened? I said, I don't know, the quad just died. And I ended up just, I said, oh, let me just fire it up one more time just to see. And sure enough, the thing freaking started up. So I ended up, luckily I finished, but by that time the damage was done. I think I got like 10th place or something. It was bad. Check this out. This little rock section was pretty cool. But uh, that, kind of sealed the deal for Brian. There was a, a chance at Iron Man that I could win, but Brian would have had to technically like break down and I would have had to win. I think I ended up finish, finishing third at Iron Man and uh, Brian ended up winning, so he really sealed the deal. But he had a great season. Definitely fun racing with him. I actually learned a lot from him because I got to chase him around for a little bit when he didn't just, you know, leave me in the dust most of the time. But by the end of the year, I was able to, you know, keep up with him for the most part, so I definitely learned a lot from him, which was cool. Me and Justin Kerr had lots of battles throughout the year, which was really awesome. And uh, I think at the end of the year, me and him were kind of battling for that, that number two spot, because he was third, I was second, and I think I, he won power line too, but I think uh, that third place at Iron Man was just enough for me to hang on to that second place position for the season, which I think I may have only gotten second by a point or two. It wasn't much, but we had a lot of fun that year battling. Aaron Hendershot was with us too. We battled with him a lot, which was always good. Good time racing with him. Six mile marker, so we're probably about halfway through. A little muddy section. Just gotta clean that camera, jeez. Oh, so that guy let me buy, that's good. So you guys can see, back in the day, I used to always overlay the telemetrics on the GoPro, so you got the speed, you got the you got the compass on there, you got a little bit of a track map, which is kind of cool. I haven't done that lately, because it does take a little more time as far as editing goes. I would have to, you know, edit all these videos with that, and then, and you know, up, you know edit them, and download them like that, and then, put them into my program to edit so it definitely would add a little more time. Some people like them, some people don't. Some people will complain, you know, take that out of there, it ruins it, but when I, you know, I think this was a Hero 5, I just cut it, so that was one of the new features when those came out, so obviously I was using it, checking it out. 
guy's gotta move. Alright, here we go. Alright, so we got clear track, so we gotta go. Justin Kerr is still behind me. He's still. I know he's there. He's still uh, letting me know he's there, so I gotta, I gotta try to keep this lead. Definitely a long race, like I said. Almost three hours. It was unbelievable. The longest race I've ever been in. I mean, the first lap was short because we missed basically from the finish line to where we came in onto the track. So our first lap was short, and that was at, that was around 38 minutes. Second lap, third lap, and fourth lap were all in the in the 40 minute range, 42 minutes, 43 minutes. My last lap was actually 44, 44, 44, which is pretty funny. And uh, Brian was actually, geez, almost five minutes ahead of me with the wind, which is crazy. That's a lot of time. I'm out of control, man. I'm out of control. Need to wipe that camera. Let's go. Let's go 410. Wipe that camera. See what we got overall. So overall, we were 46 overall, which wasn't bad. I'm not sure how many riders with, were uh, there total. Let me see. Let me look. Let me look. So we had 132 riders total in that afternoon race. Like I said, I was 46, which was uh, definitely pretty good. Another pass, that's a good pass, we'll take it. You guys can see a lot of spots over here, all these roots that are getting exposed. There's definitely some rough spots right there, there's a little spot. And like I said, this is just the first lap, so those, the, the track's just gonna keep deteriorating as we go. It's gonna get a lot rougher. Definitely, I mean, I did like this track, but I think choosing between the general and this track, I think the general would win. Hey, we wiped the camera, thank you. I say the general would win because, um, you know, they got the motocross track there, which we usually get to go on that, at least a couple of sections of it, which is, you know, it's fun when you get to mix it up with a little bit of woods and a little bit of motocross track. In the past couple years at the general they've had a pretty cool monster mile section which was just like a, a bunch of gravel all piled together like giant whoops and little jumps and sharp turns and stuff and i'm sure most of you guys have seen the videos or like the live feed on racer tv but definitely a cool section and um uh, that place is pretty big which is nice the camping there is great they got hookups and stuff so you can get a camping spot there or just get you know a normal spot in the, you know in the field or near the woods trackside or whatever but, um, we did a camping spot in 2018 which was cool we had full hookups we had electric sewer and water which was cool and then uh 2019 we just parked in a you know a cool trackside spot that we that we ended up finding because all of us weren't able to uh get a camping spot together so we just said screw it and we took a uh, you know, like a like a, a usual spot we do when we go to these races. Oh. So 
So our average well, speed right now, 15, uh, 15. Oh, it's falling down. We're at about 15, 17 miles an hour, which is good. That was a bad line. That was a horrible line. There's a state behind that guy. So we're at 17 again. So, oh, oh, oh. Don't stall, buddy. This guy's going to let me by. Come on, let's go. Let's go. There we go. Yay. There we go, moving. 17, 18. That's not bad. It's not bad. Oh, oh, a little muddy section, a little muddy section. So we're on the 8, we're on the 8. This guy's stuck, that's not good. Oh, that's my buddy Billy Wallace. <laughs> William Wallace. He doesn't race anymore. Guys come and go, you know it's good to take a break. Nothing wrong with that. Racing's not cheap, guys. You guys race, you know, travel expenses, time out of work. Plus, trying to maintain and build a quad and, you know, maintain a vehicle, maintain a camper, it, it adds up fast. So, yeah, that guy was moved over for us, which is good. We get by this guy, we'll, be, we'll have some clear tracks. See all the roots, guys? A lot of roots. Look at that. I believe we are coming close to the FMF. One, I, I don't know if this had one FMF section or two. Oh, all right, there you go. That guy moves over. Right, we're at 20. He said 20 miles an hour. Should be an uh, FMF hill climb coming up. It wasn't anything crazy, but um, well, it wasn't. Oh, there's a cool little rock jump right here. That's really cool. That was fun. But we should be coming up to the FMF hill climb. I think it was not just just after that rock section. Just a little little hill climb, which was kind of fun. I don't know, there may have been a go around for it too, I don't know, I'm not even sure, I think, you, I think you may have had to go up the hill, but it wasn't, like I said, it wasn't any, like Iron Man Hill or anything crazy. Obviously in Georgia there's really not any kind of crazy elevation changes, and you get these small little rolling hills, but nothing, like some of the other tracks, like Steel Creek has crazy hill sections, like, that's such a fun track with the hills, it's, it's crazy. Big Buck has some good hill climbs. I think I think Steel Creek is one of the best ones. Along with Iron Man, Iron Man has some great hill climbs. And it's rough, it's definitely rough. This is only the first lap. And we're almost we're almost at that 30 minute mark and it's just just lap one so definitely crazy. Shiny red clay. Oh, guy's broken down. Oh, I thought I saw a rider. I must have a little muddy section. Yeah, he sees me. He's gonna move over. Thank you. Thank you. We're moving good, guys. We're moving good. We've got a good pace going right now. Definitely was. Uh, I mean, not not like a stressful race but with what happened in 2016 breaking my hand nine mile marker i definitely just wanted to uh finish this race was obviously priority finish it safely like i said we ended up getting second so that was a plus but it's definitely good to uh come back when you had a bad race at a track or an injury and just come back and have a good race and finish and your body's in one piece, your quad's in one piece, definitely a good feeling. I guess Camp Coker is my next one that I have never had a good race at Camp Coker. And I, I actually really like that track. I've always had an issue there. I, I've always had bad finishes. Usually, I think every, every, every time I race there, I've gotten last place in the class. I broke down a couple times. I had a flat tire last year. And it wasn't so much a flat, I did have tire, you know, flat prevention, but it was, uh, I had like a tear. It was probably like six or seven inches long, and the tire was filling up with dirt, so it was wobbling. It was just impossible to go fast. The year before that, I hit a generator, maybe you guys have seen that. That wasn't, 
that wasn't very good. I was doing good too. All right, so we see the FMF hill climb right there, straight up there. It's not bad, guys. You can go to the right to go around it, but this this was fine. Some fans hanging out up there. I mean, it's not Iron Man Hill, but it was cool. So we had the generator issue, 2018, uh, which took me out lap two. I was actually in the lead, having a good race, and then uh, actually bent my axle when I hit the generator. So I couldn't finish riding because the wheel was wobbling wicked bad. And then the year before that, I just had a couple like, not bad crashes, just went off the track a couple times, just not having a good day. I think it was same thing like a sixth place. 7th place finish. It may, not have, it may not have been last place, but it was not. It was not a good finish. So, uh, definitely looking forward to some redemption at Camp Coca for 2020. That's definitely something I need to make happen. So, mile 10, baby. Mile 10. We're almost at the end. Take another two miles to go. Back, seeing uh, there's definitely uh, some Bet B guys behind me. They are close, they are close. I mean, this place kind of looks like Big Buck, guys. What do you think? It, it kind of reminds me of Big Buck because Big Buck has that orangey kind of clay, and I mean, the trees kind of look the same. I will say that. I think this track is a lot rootier than Big Buck. Big Buck is is a lot smoother. It has it does have uh, its rough sections, but I think this track is just just beat up a lot more, a lot more exposed roots. As a checkpoint, probably the last checkpoint before we head to the finish line. Let me know guys if you like these. I have a ton of race videos from Jeans to CMY Noah. If you guys like them, let me know in the comments. I will keep doing them. I'll maybe try to do one a week or one every other week. Um, depending on what else I have to upload. So let me know. I'll keep doing them. And then uh, what do you guys think? Should I do this for the races in 2020? Should I... Should I... Uh, do the commentary on them all or do you guys just want to see just a race video like i normally do let me know too in the comments what do you think man i just want to see that finish line imagine we got three more laps of this too guys three more laps two hours and 50 minutes i mean i didn't i didn't know we were we were racing sunday in the afternoon dirt bike race because that's what they do those guys race for three hours that's nuts Oh, this guy's pointing a good line, thank you. A little tiny hook line. Not bad, not bad. I see fields, I see fields, guys. That means we're getting close, we're definitely getting close. Watching this also kind of reminds me of the uh, the uh, Mountaineer GNCC we did this year at that Boy Scout camp because that track was kind of like this. It was I think right around 11 or 12 miles, and that track only had about a mile of woods. Ooh, rock jump! That track only had about a mile of woods. I mean, a mile of fields, and the rest was all woods. So it was like never ending. Oh, so there's the 11. But that was actually a fun track. So here's the other field section we had, just kind of a, a switch back, we kind of go all the way to the end, and then we swing back around and go right back into the woods. So this was where the start was last year, guys, right in this whole corner. So you can see how much room it added for, uh, you know, people to park and camp. It was definitely nice. See a nice section for pitting. That's it, we go right back into the woods. 
right here and we're, we're uh, working our way to the finish line guys, it's coming up, it's coming up. We hit it just after the finish line, so probably right on the one or just before the one mile marker, which was a cool spot. It was actually the same spot we parked in 2016, so we just kind of, we tend to just go to our same spots if they work out with everybody. We just kind of go to the same spots at every track. Pretty much most people do that, you know, the hardcore guys. All right, so this is Pro Row, so we are getting close, guys. Pro Row, Pro Pips going through there. And you'll see just straight ahead is the finish line. We get a little short second of woods and we're there. So guys, if you like this video, shoot me a like. It actually helps me out a ton. The more likes we get, the more chances are that this video will get recommended by YouTube, which equals more views. And uh, any questions, shoot me a comment. And if you're not yet, please subscribe. And I uh, hope you guys enjoyed this race rewind video, Cannonball GNCC in uh, 2017, guys. And we'll see you guys on the next one.